I worked with practically everybody in the film. Carl Hardman, Marilyn Eastman, George, Jack, Russ. We all did voiceover work, television, commercial work together in Pittsburgh. I went out to Hollywood back in 66, 67. Shortly, oh, I'd say about a month or so while I was out there, I got a call from Carl saying, we're going to make a film. Would you like to come home and audition for it? So I flew back from Hollywood to Pittsburgh, ended up getting the part of Barbara, and the rest is history. I played her as she was written. We did a lot of improvisation shooting. We'd have certain dialogue written. There was the working script. But oftentimes, we discussed what was to happen in the scene, then improvised the dialogue. For example, the segment where Barbara is sitting down telling Ben about the candy, Johnny, being attacked, and she's hot, she undoes does her jacket, that kind of thing. She tells the entire story. That was all ad lib. I remember we did, we did everything in one take. Oh, he was wonderful. Very willing to listen to ideas. He had, I believe, distinct ideas, images, how he wanted it done or how he saw it, but very flexible. We didn't have a lot of stock, film stock to, to burn. We had to, to really keep everything concise. I remember changing, he taught me how to change the film, load the, the, um, the camera in a, a bag right there on set. He was marvelous. A very creative, intense, down-to-earth guy. To this day, he is. I was running to the gas pump. The gas pump, we thought, was firmly attached. George, again, was shooting up. He was kneeling down with the camera right in front of the gas pump. I came running into that pump, hit the pump. It was just sitting there. It wasn't bolted. The thing, heavy sucker, nearly fell on top of George, squishing the fellow to death. But it was averted. We caught the thing. He wasn't hurt. Watching it at the premiere, I just marveled that all the takes that we did could be put together into something that, even though it didn't cost a million bucks to make, said something. and it. it it held your interest. There were some beautiful shots. When I say beautiful, you wonder how could it be beautiful in a horror film? But really, the, the shadows that George figured out to create certain effects, I thought it was great. One of my favorites to this day is the, the shot where George is on the ground, he's shooting up, there's the little music box. Barbara comes by and she touches the top of it, the little doors open. George shoots through it, and just as the little doors open, you see Barbara's face looking through. You can see her eyes in that horror state. And then the, the little doors close again. I thought that was an exquisite shot. We had a wonderful time. I met uh, Patricia Tallman. We all went to the premiere up in San Jose, had a great time. The remake surprised me. Barbara ends up with an Uzi and fatigue, mowing them all down. In a way, I'm, I'm sorry that they did that. To me, it wasn't a remake then. Even though it was in the 90s, and yes, women were going to control the world, or you know, they kick-started their Harleys and roared down the freeway, but I was sorry to see that we changed it that much. But boy, color, effects, <laughs> far superior to ours. I think it stands out because it truly was one of the first films where the good guys 
didn't survive. Up to that point in time, if you had a white hat on, no matter what chased you, no matter how horrible the situation, you always ended up alive with that white hat on. In Night of the Living Dead, didn't work out that way. The good people you were hoping were, would survive, you always thought, they're going to make it. At least Ben's going to make it. Didn't. That, I believe, was the profound effect the movie had. It helped change the way horror films were made.